So today we're gonna to be checking out five brand new fragrance clones from what appears to be a relatively new clone brand by the name of Emperor. Never heard of this brand before, but now all of a sudden, we've got a bunch of them to try. And I know everybody's thinking, yay, another clone brand, that's just what we need. I think this is only the beginning. I mean, just look at what happened last year with Fragrance World. Not that they're brand new or anything, but it seems like out of nowhere, they just popped up, really just took over the market. And they were pumping out a ton of really good quality and really impressive fragrance clones. And then of course, um, Latafa, Paris Corner, and things like that were really uh, keeping things moving too. So while it might look a little bit like it's just clone invasion and that it's gonna take over everything, I don't think that's necessarily the case, but I do think people realize that there is definitely a market for more affordable alternatives, especially when new designer prices are just continuing to go up. So like I said, we have five of them here. I haven't opened up any of these yet. We're gonna try them all on camera and we'll just kind of smell them and I'll tell you what they're a clone of and everything like that as we go. The first one is Valencia Womo Intense. That one's probably pretty self-explanatory. Supposed to be Valentino Womo Intense. Also, Fragrance Buy sent these over to me. And so um, I didn't buy these, but they did say, hey, we're getting these in. Would you like to try them? And I said, yeah, sure. Like always, that doesn't dictate my opinion here because if they're not good, it's not on them. It's not their brand. They don't care. And uh, I'll say if they're good or if they're not. I hope that they're good. Now, I think I'm just gonna go straight on the box for each one of these because I just don't wanna, you know, spray it all over my skin and get everything all confused. So we'll check out this one first. And right away, definitely getting VUI, a nice leathery iris, masculine smell. And that is one thing that separates Valentino Womo Intense from a lot of the other iris forward scents out there is that leather. It smells fantastic, it makes it a bit more masculine, gives it a bit more of a kind of a texture, a little bit more of a classy edge as well. Kind of just breaks up some of the sweetness that you get from most predominantly uh, focused iris scents out there. And I'm definitely getting that here. Leather, iris, some tonka bean. Smells really, really good and, and definitely a great, great alternative so far. And so because this is like a first impressions video, I'm not gonna be going over performance and all of that here. Um, as time goes on, as I have more time to test these, these are gonna get worked into some other list videos and clone videos and things like that where I'll be able to give a more extensive breakdown on these and maybe a couple of these will end up getting a full dedicated video, but I have to say, we're off to a good start. Like I said, new clone brand or at least new to me and this is uh, looking promising so far. And I guess I'll show you the bottle too. I don't know why I didn't even think of that. Kinda has the textured look going on like some of the Valentinos have. Definitely not exactly the same, but you know, taking a page out of their book a little bit, which is pretty fitting given that it's a clone. So off to a really good start. I like this one. So we're gonna go with something next that I don't have the original of and I've never smelled the original of. So I can't say for sure if this one is gonna be a good accurate clone or not, but at least we'll open it up and we'll try it. We'll see how it smells and see if the quality and everything like that is kind of on par with what we just tried a minute ago. It is Amber Sun. This is their Velvet Collection. And again, this is by Emperor. And this one is going to be a clone of uh, Dolce & Gabbana Amber Sun. Like I said, never smelled that one before. So we'll just key kind of, you know, what this is like, and maybe I'll end up liking it to where I want to buy that one. So it does look a ton like the, uh, the Velvet Collection presentation. That is shocking. I wasn't quite expecting that. So I have a couple from the line. I've got uh, Velvet Exotic Leather, and then I've got, what was the other one? It was, uh, I'm gonna have to check. Velvet Incenso, that's the other one I have. So we'll show these side by side. Wow, that is pretty cool. Very, very close presentation. Both of the ones that I have from this lineup are great. So let's go ahead and get this one on here and we'll see also the atomizer. Nice pressurized, puts out a lot of liquid as well. 
That smells great. Getting some oud, getting a lot of uh, very much an incense, ambery, velvety smell. And I know that kind of sounds weird. What does velvet smell like? It's kind of more of a, a texture. It kind of has a soft, warm, rich, powdery, smoky, ambery nuance. Going to be sweeter, going to be more unisex, which I think all of these are, but this doesn't lean you know, dramatically masculine or feminine. They just kind of keep it pretty neutral here and whoever likes it will be able to pull it off. But this smells great. Uh, quality is impressive. You might not expect it to be. You might be expecting something that's cheap and, and kind of flat, but this one does stand out. It is kind of vibrant. It pops and it might surprise you. This might be something I have to look into. You know, again, I haven't smelled the real deal before. So as far as accuracy is concerned, I've got no idea. But if the original smells like this, then this is something that I would really enjoy. And if you're into something that's going to be sweeter, richer, smokier, and, and just kind of a, a different style of sweetness compared to what's being released now, this might be something to look into. Nice presentation, nice quality. This is good. Okay, next up we have Genius Metallic. Okay, and again, sticking with the same clone brand here. And this one I'm pretty excited about because it is a 1 million Lucky clone. Now, 1 million Lucky has kind of had a weird time period where sometimes it's impossible to get on discounters, other times it pops up for a little while. Not everybody wants to pay retail for things, and so that kind of can throw things off a little bit. I've got a mailing list you can sign up to. Um, you can get notified when rare, discontinued, hard to find fragrances come into stock, when brand new releases hit uh, discounters as well. We're gonna be sending you the best deals and you can save the most amount of money if you sign up there. So 1 million lucky has popped up here recently. I've sent out an email, sells out very quickly. So we'll see if this is gonna be something that can kind of tide you over. If 1 million lucky is hard to find, you just don't wanna pay retail, or maybe you just don't wanna spend that amount of money in general, we'll see if this is gonna be a good alternative. 1 Million Lucky is pretty unique, all things considered. It's got like plum, hazelnut, aldehydes. It's just something that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense on paper in terms of the note breakdown, but when you smell it, it is something that's different and exciting. Um, this cap, I thought it was magnetic, but it's not. That sucks. Oh well, okay. Let's go ahead and get this one on here, and we'll see. Really unique scent. And it smells a lot like One Million Lucky. You're getting that fruity plum off the opening, which is what you get from One Million Lucky off the opening, which is very unique. You don't see plum used all that often in men's fragrances. And maybe it's used more often over on the women's side, I'm not sure, but it's just not utilized heavily. You see it in a few, you know, there's Ideal Extreme by Guerlain, there's Rosasi Hawis, and there's a few others, of course, but it's nowhere near being used as often as like apple or, or you know, bergamot or orange, other citruses and fruits or anything like that. So when it's used, it stands out. Definitely picking up on it here. I'm getting that hazelnut, the aldehydes, getting just that kind of very classic balance of fruity, sweet, and fresh and clean too. And that's what makes One Million Lucky such a good scent because it combines what you would expect from a great sweet scent and what you would expect from a fantastic, fresh, kind of clean scent. When you get two of those together, you just get something that's ultimately very versatile, something that everybody's going to love the smell of. And I'm getting that here, very close to one million lucky. And if you don't want to spend that amount of money, which, you know, it's up over $100 most times, this is going to be a good option for you. Really nice. And I believe it's probably one of the first 1 million lucky clones out there. Okay, this next one is another one that I have not smelled the original of before. So as far as accuracy is concerned, again, I'm not going to be able to provide that for you here. This is a Tom Ford electric cherry clone. I've gotten to the point where I just don't really like buying the private blends all that much. If I can get them below retail, that's better, but even still, they're expensive. Typically, a lot of you guys watching aren't really going to be interested in that type of stuff. And so 
I'm not really interested in it either. I just end up not buying it. Um, but I do really like Lost Cherry, really like Bitter Peach. Those are a couple great ones. Um, but other than that, guys, I just don't really buy a ton of the private blends anymore. I will admit, though, they do look really good. Every time a new private blend comes out, I sit there and have this kind of back and forth with myself. Maybe I should get that one. That just sounds really good. They have a great way of naming them and marketing them. I mean, it's Tom Ford. They're professionals at that. But then I look at the price and I'm like, you know what? I think I'll pass. So this will be the first time that I experience something that supposedly smells like electric cherry. And uh, maybe this will just make me want to buy the real deal as well. Who knows? But here's our presentation. Now remember, what brand was it? Was it uh, Fragrance World, Paris Corner, Latafo, one of those guys putting out the private blend clones and bottles like this? They got in trouble. So I don't know how long this is going to last here with Emper, but they're kind of uh, playing with fire. So they may have to change up their presentation. Definitely getting a very sweet cherry note, which immediately gives it a kind of a feminine smell to me. It just doesn't really give off a masculine undertone like maybe some other fruits would, at least comparatively speaking to cherry. And then uh, kind of a fresh green, lavender, geranium, minty freshness, to use that word again. Has a real bright kind of vibrant kick underneath that cherry. Aside from the cherry itself, not getting a ton of other sweetness either. So the only thing that is a little bit sweet about this one right now is just coming from that fruity cherry note. And then I'm getting like green aromatics and that sort of thing as it sits right now off this opening. Again, I don't even know the full note breakdown, haven't smelled the real one, just kind of going off of what this smells like. Obviously don't know if it's going to be accurate, but it's another one that smells really good has great quality on par with these others that we've tried so far. And it's going to be something where if you want a, you know, Tom Ford Electric Cherry clone, this might be something to look into. I mean, if you uh, are like me and you've never smelled it before, this just might be something that you might enjoy as well. And um, it could be something you could wear maybe in fall, early spring, heading into winter. This is not something that I would really like to touch in summertime. It's just too sweet even for my liking in summer. But it does smell nice. Okay, last up, we have Emperor Macho Only Man. And this is going to be a Dolce & Gabbana The One Eau de Parfum clone. Also, might be the first ever The One clone. Eau de Parfum, that is. Maybe even Eau de Toilette. I don't know if I've seen any The One clones before. Now, you're probably asking, why clone it? It's, you know, in production. You can buy it everywhere. It's a good question. I didn't clone it. This isn't my creation. I will say the price of Dolce & Gabbana The One Eau de Parfum is not what it used to be. It's $70 to $80 on discounters now, okay? What is it at retail? Just a little bit north of that. So you could still save money going this direction and the performance will be the main thing that I'm interested in finding out about here. And this might be one that definitely gets a dedicated video. Before we get too excited, I guess we should actually make sure it smells like Dolce & Gabbana The One Eau de Parfum, although considering the track record with a few of these so far, I would imagine that it probably will. And hey, look at that. They've got the kind of classic The One Eau de Parfum gradient going on. No writing on the bottle. Oh, there it is. It's right up there on the side. I don't even know if that's going to show up. Macho Only Man. That's going to be a fingerprint magnet right there. Um, but yeah, kind of cool, unique bottle. I've never seen this style before. Let's see what it smells like. Let's see if it lives up to its expectations. Hopefully it does. And it does smell like Dolce & Gabbana The One. This one though, might not be as accurate as a couple of the others. Like I will say, uh, the One Million Lucky one and the Valentino Womo Intense one, very accurate, unmistakably clones of what they were trying to achieve. This one, there's a bit more of a variance going on. I will say that. Not quite as close. The tobacco in here is a little bit more smoky. You know, and Dolce & Gabbana, the one EDT, Eau de Parfum, it has tobacco. It's one of the main accords, but it's very subdued and very designer-ish. 
After all, it's a bestseller, and if you walk around smelling like actual smoke, it might not work for everybody's situation. And this one doesn't smell like actual smoke, definitely not, but it is a bit more of a rich kind of pipe tobacco. But it still does have the amber. I was getting a bit of that grapefruit off the initial opening there, which is kind of found in the one. So definitely heavily inspired by Dolce & Gabbana, the one Eau de Parfum. I would just say the accuracy is a bit lower. There's something a bit different about this one. Where the One Million Lucky clone and the Valentino Womo Intense clone, I would, if I had to put a number, I would say is 90 to 95%. This one might be 80 to 85. There's just a little bit more of a variation, which personally, I'm okay with. I mean, I have Dolce & Gabbana the one several bottles of it. A lot of you guys do too. It's not the most expensive scent out there. This might make a little bit more sense, not because it's a straight up clone, but because it takes that DNA and it makes it a bit different. I think that could be something that people would be interested in. You know, if Dolce & Gabbana, the one, is as played out as people say it is, this might be something to revive it just enough to where you may want to wear it to work again and it might make it stand out a bit more. Like I said, I'll be really curious to see what the performance on this one is going to be like. Um, it's an eau de parfum, so kind of right in line with what the 180p is, but we all know concentration doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot. So we'll see. I hope it performs better than the one eau de parfum. That'll be another great reason to buy. But even beside that, just a little bit of a unique twist on this DNA that we haven't really had before. I do like it. All righty, guys, that's it. Checking out a few new fragrance clones from a new brand. Um, I'll link them all down below so you can pick them up and check them out if you want. Again, my mailing list and my texting list at the Lincoln number down below, those will be the first to find out about rare, discontinued, hard to find releases, but also brand new designer releases hitting discounters as well. So make sure you sign up there, Just enter your email at the link down below, send any text to the number down below, and you'll be put on both of those lists. You'll be the first to know anytime something good comes up. We've helped thousands of people save a ton of money and get a ton of really cool things. So I want to help you out next. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.